Hey guys and welcome back to another one of my video tutorials. I'm Krellen and today I am going to be bringing you another coding video. Yep, I've decided to take it up a notch and create a game. We're going to be using C Sharp as usual, um, but we will be using GDI Plus graphics device interface for the uh, drawing, uh, drawing of our bitmaps, the drawing of our text, as you can see here. We have some scores um, which are shown upon a bitmap of a um, whatever you want to call it sign. Over here on the right, we have another signpost, and uh, we have some text on the signpost which I added using Photoshop. Start, stop, reset, and quit. Here we created some hotspots which we can click within in order to activate the methods to start, stop, reset, and quit the game. Down here we also have another, um, well not really a hotspot, but a, a rectangle which we created around our mole um, to determine the uh, hit area. So uh, anywhere within that region that we click is deemed a hit and the region moves with the mole. So that at any point we shoot the mole within the head, he is splattered. We get a splat uh, bitmap shown and we get a hit count and shots fired count. If we miss him, we'll obviously get a miss count, and then we will get an average of the score, with the average being calculated from hits over misses. And then down here we have a skill level. We skill level ranges from noob, novice, and up to ace respectively. If you get an average score of less than 20%, then you will be deemed a noob, anywhere between 20% and 50% deemed a novice, and anywhere above 50% deemed an ace. If you're a noob, Chappy here hops along at approximately one hop per second. Novice, he hops along at around about um, one hop every half a second. And an ace, he will hop along around about 300 milliseconds, which uh, I defy anybody to be able to keep up with. Over here on the side, again, like I say, we have some hotspots which we will uh, code up, and uh, I will go through the process in one of the videos of doing that. Adding the bitmaps to the game will be another video. Hit detection, another video. Uh, cursor creation another video and then scoreboard update another video but before we do any of that we obviously have to get our assets in place and uh, set up the basic game loop and the, the basic form here so uh, that'll be video two um, because this video is essentially just an introductory video um, and uh, I don't want to waste too much time going into coding at the moment. I just want you guys to basically see what the video is all about, whet your appetite, and hopefully uh, you'll be you'll come along for the ride. Um, so without further ado, let me just fire this game up and uh, show you what it's all about. So let's hit start. A little gun fires off, and you can see our chap is running around. And now the objective is to hit him. As you can see there we hit him and we get a bitmap splat thrown on top of him to show that we actually did kill him up here on the left you can see in our score panel the shots total number 11 hits 4 misses 7 and 36 percent average hit rate skill is still novice because i am uh, average score of 36 and i haven't got up to 50 shots yet so So you can see now, I've actually got up to 50 shots fired and I've got an average hit ratio of 60%, so my skill level has now um, gone up to ace and you can see our man is flipping around there at a right old rate of knots. So let's test the um, noob um, skill level. So to do that we obviously need to fire up and get less than 60% hit ratio, so let's just randomly fire around the screen. So nearly there. There you go. Now you can see we have got the uh, skill level of noob, and our chap now has slowed right down to a sedate pace of one hop per second. Where it's a piece of cake to hit him. Once you've got over twenty percent, you can see skill level has gone back to back up to novice. So not a bad little game, and uh, it's fun playing it. And uh, I hope you guys think so, and I hope you guys think it's fun developing it. So, without further ado, see you in lesson two. Oh, 
Okay, so on with the lesson. Um, first thing, as always, is to obviously create the project. So roll up your Visual Studio IDE environment, pop off to the Files menu and click New Project. And let's call this thing, ooh, well, we can call it Mole Shooter. The original game was called Mole Shoot. And this one is going to be Mobile Shooter, so I don't get a name conflict with the original project. And we will create a directory for the solution and click OK. And here we have our basic form. So we have to get on with some basic properties here. So obviously we need to name the form as per the name of the game. So we go over to our properties panel here and we need to find the text underneath the appearance menu and change that to mole shooter. Hit enter and you can see that our title bar now shows the name of the game. Okay, so the next thing that I would like to do is to set up the background image of our field and sky. Now, initially, I'm no graphics artist by any stretch, so uh, I went off to uh, good old Google and did a search to see what images we could find. And as you can see here on this screen, there are plenty to choose from. There you go. So, as you can see, some similar pictures here to what we're already using. You can use any of these you like. Obviously, if it's shutter stock, then you may end up having to pay for um, the backdrop. But for example, this one here doesn't appear to belong to any particular stock footage company. So, you can download the PNG. I would recommend you download the PNG and uh, medium or large so that you don't lose the detail. Um, <clears throat> but we already got ours and we are going to add that now to a resources folder within our project. So we need to right click the Mole Shooter project folder and add a new folder. And we are going to call this resources which is where we're going to keep all our images, sound files, etc. So the next task is to add the background image to the resource folder. And to do that, we need to select our image from our downloads folder, which is on my other screen. So you can't see this, but I've now copied the image and I am now going to, oh, sorry, I have now copied the image location and I'm going to go to the um, properties window here in fact um, we can either add the, the, the resource here but the best way to add it would be to go to your project and uh, mole shooter properties here add a resource existing file and then use your downloads folder location to locate your farm free image and uh, or whatever your file name might be double click it so it's now added to your um, resources section or your resources folder and then rename it to something intelligible um, I think we called ours what do we call ours just let me check uh, we called ours background funny enough so we'll do that here we'll call it background there we go and I can't spell background now we can Okay, save that, close that down. Now you'll notice over here in the resources folder, we have our background image. So uh, we can get our image here and we can right click and go to properties. And then look at the details, we can get the width and the height. So it's 600 by 445. 600 by 445, so we can go back to our form and set the width to 600 by 445 or the size at least we're going to find it, here we go so 600 by 
four, four, five. There we go. And then we go back to the top of the uh, properties section here for the background image. Drop down the browse button and select background. Select OK, and there we have it. Our background's all set up lovely jovely. Save that. Okay, so the next stage in the game is to set up the um, <clears throat> the heart of the game, which we call the game loop, and uh, we'll set up the paint event, which gets fired each time the screen needs to be updated, and uh, that's going to be every tick of the game loop. So theory being, we will make changes to our mole, changes to text, for example, updating the score. Any graphics on the screen, we will refresh, and then we will call the or refresh the screen by calling the on paint event, which will then go and redraw the screen. So first things first, right click on the uh, form and click view code. You see here at the moment we have got very little in the uh, in the way of code class name form one not very original so what we're going to do is right click that refactor and rename and we're going to call this to uh, we'll call this mole shooter that'll do okay okay that's also uh, fixed our constructor for us. Okay, so at the heart of the game loop is the timer control. So go to your control panel here, toolbox, and look for timer control here. Drag it onto your form. Then go to the name. We'll call it timer game loop. Set the interval to 100 milliseconds, i.e. leave it alone. And that's about it. Go over to your events icon or tool button up here, just underneath the properties window. Click that and you can see that you've got your tick event window. Double click that and that creates your timer game loop underscore tick event handler. So in here we can control the um, period at which the graphics are updated. So for example, the mole will jump every 500 milliseconds and uh, any mouse move events where we're tracking the, the mouse moves or uh, scores, etc. we could update every 100 milliseconds. Um, we can count the frames that are drawn on the screen. So basically the beating heart of the game. Um, it's all done with inside the time, timer game loop. In here, what we then do once we've updated all our parameters for the x, y coordinates of the mole and the score, etc., we will uh, we will fire a refresh for the form, which will then fire off the on paint event, which will in turn redraw the screen with all our characters at their new locations. Now the other thing I want to do before I close this video off is to add the on paint event. Now we do actually have a paint event for the form. Um, if you select a form and then select your uh, events button over here you'll see that we've got a paint handler here but we're not going to use that. Um, apparently it's not very efficient for doing GDI painting on the screen updates like this. Um, the best thing to do is to use the virtual on paint function or overwrite override the uh, virtual on paint function so we are going to do that which basically means adding the uh, function manually so this is going to be a protected function and it's not going to return any parameters uh, we're overriding the base function so override I can't spell override Void and then on paint on paint parentheses. And then in here we're going to pass the paint event arguments. So paint event args. What the fuck? Go to that. And 
what happened there. Control V, E, parentheses, brackets. That's more like it. So protected override void on paint is the method name. And then we are going to be passing in some paint events arguments. And in here, we are going to create a graphics device context DC for drawing on. And this is going to be derived from the screen graphics adapter. Parentheses, semicolon. Nope, no parentheses. There you go. Save that. Uh, actually, one thing I almost forgot was the um, fact that we are actually um, overriding a base on paint event. So, you know, I said earlier on in the uh, form paint event handler over here, uh, if I can get it back up, for the events, we have this paint um, event handler. This paint event handler is actually derived from this on paint event, which actually has a base class, which we are overriding. So we need to, um, call the base on paint and pass at the event parameters for it to correctly operate. So uh, yeah, don't forget to do that. Very important. Um, yeah. Okay. So onwards and upwards. Okay. So, uh, we still have to obviously put the graphics painting code inside the on paint event, which we'll do in another video and another day. And also the uh, game loop data we need to put in here on another date. And I just noticed we have two game loop functions. So uh, obviously a copy and paste error. So we will lose the first one that's not required. So, so far within your main class, you should have the mail, uh, the uh, mole shooter constructor the time and game loop event handler and the on paint event handler and uh, the additional code we will add at a later date like I say so uh, yeah until then I hope you guys have really enjoyed the video as much as I have and uh, as much as I have had actually going through it with you I uh, look forward to going through the remaining parts um, of the animation of the mole, the splatting of the mole, the firing with our gun sight, the sound effects, and uh, the score. So uh, until then, guys, have a great day, and uh, see you in part two.